and welcome to Geek It Play Studio Tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to create this scenery. We'll look how to create a displacement on the materials, precisely on this object, how to create a large displacement, small detail displacement, work with the masking tools, with a different type of fractals as well, work a little bit more advanced with the rock, a fake rock displacement material as well, populations, lighting, and atmosphere settings, as well with materials for the water and other stuff. And the last portion, we also work a little bit in Photoshop to enhance this image a little bit, take to next step. So let's go ahead and start working on this. So let's go ahead and start working on our project. And during time when we work on this project, we will stop sometimes and look on the properties of the nodes that we do not cover in other tutorials. So it's kind of expand your knowledge of the Terrigen 3 and help you to find different ways um, to express your creativity or fine tune the idea you're working on. So right here is our default scene from the Terrigen 3 when you open. You notice what we have, it, it is fractal terrain, right here in the node it's creating, but also if we zoom out, you see on the middle right here, we have it almost set flat valley, which is very useful when you start working. This is valley is created by the um, masking as a simple shape. And then this tutorial will use a quite a bit of the masking and displacement and I want to look a little bit closer on that and how we can use it. So masking is applied specific effect to selected area. Currently, it's using a simple shape. We'll look on the simple shape masking before in another tutorials, but overall very fast over group right here, we have it our position. We have it size of the masking. If it's different polygons, you can always rotate. And also you can apply colors. The one nice things about the Terrigen 3, it is you can use a different ways to apply masking. And because masking will work as a high field terrain from black to white, so you can also apply just the images or projection from the camera. As example, right here I can go and create a new shader and I will go to color shader and we'll just create a distance shader. The usually you can use distance shader when you hook up the camera to one end that calculate from position of this camera to the distance you specify. This is actually very useful distance shader when you want to um, control, for example, density of the populations for your objects or plants or far away you're going, you want less population or maybe some other effect. But you can also use this as a masking as example. So let's look on this node on some properties what is habit. First, you'll notice we have a camera. So let's go ahead, disconnect, simple shade we have it currently and connect our distance shader. You'll notice it is changed and we almost have it like island on the middle right here. The reason is why, because in our fractal right here, we have an invert mask. So if we disable invert mask, you don't see any effect because now we're still covering our colors. We need to put a camera inside, link to our connection. So we'll start calculating the point where we start apply this effect. Let's do this way. We go to create other and we'll go create a camera. We can take this camera and connect it. So right now, right here, you can notice already we start affecting. The one nice things about this, that how camera effect. So let's open distance shader again and look. So you'll notice we have it enable, disable as usual. Apply far away color, which is white. And you can kind of even apply smooth. So this is in some ways you can very fast flatten your scenery, create smoother by apply this general to the mask and take all far away color so it will smooth out very well. And in opposite, you can actually take near color and bring all the way closer 
So you now you have an opposite of take blending, think about this blending of fractal and bring up and decreasing. So you can almost manipulate with the near camera and far away height of your terrain. Okay, right here next we have a far distance. Of course, your near distance is zero by camera. You can modify this and you can have far away distance. So let me go reset these values back. As example, we can have it a very sharp edges. If we bring this, for example, very close, you can notice right here around the camera, we have it almost like plateau created. The camera on lower level. And think about this apply plateau, it's not in two dimensional. Around camera, you have a sphere. It's what right here we're selecting as distance sphere. And distance sphere will go around and apply in 360 degrees all over places. So if we look how it's well work, it'll stick from middle and gradients will dissipating. You have another ways to change, which is Z depth, which take from camera and dissipating this at another direction. And you notice right here, it's have it with this proper Z depth. Depend how you want to plot, you can use one or another. And also, you notice right here we have our camera assigned the property. So, this way is kind of nice. If you want it, you can assign um, flatten to your terrain, or you can assign even where you want to populate, uh, for example, your plants. So, in this case, when you move camera, you don't need to populate plants all over your infinity terrains. You want to populate in a specific segment. So in this case, you can take your uh, shader, apply it, link to the camera, and as you're going and move your camera around, okay, let me select this camera. So is you'll notice you also change um, moving the masking around. Again, this is just the example to show different ways you can use it, those masks and apply them. Um, let me go ahead and remove this one and we'll reconnect original mask. So for this, our tutorial will just use its surface uh, shape mask. Let me go back and invert it. Okay. Okay, so right now we look kind of for the masking and when we're going to work a little bit more with the working on the objects uh, what we're going to create it will use it more and more of the masking so you kind of understand in a ways how we can combine them and use it together so right now let's work on a displacement and uh, displacement utilization of the displacement in the environmental programs um, from my experience Turgeon 3 I think it's using the best I have to experience work with the Geoworks with uh, Vue and other applications, and again, the other displacement and detailizations. Uh, Terrigen 3, I think, is one of the best how I handle this. But you kind of need to understand how the system work. So let me go ahead and create our first object, our central, what we will be working on. And we'll start looking how the displacement can combine. Before we do this, I want to say, the part of this tutorial was greatly inspired by um, Shmer Lab a user from the Turgeon Forum. He had a great tutorial about how to create towers. And uh, one of the techniques that he was using there, I'll be utilizing in our tutorials and mostly how he created tower. We did look on some of those properties similar in other tutorials, but I think we'll use a little bit more in this tutorial and overall on say uh, be sure to go on a Terrigen forum check on the user tutorials or file sharing area and check for those great tutorials that shared by community and hopefully they will inspire you as well so let's continue in our next part working on creating the object here 